Hey everybody, welcome to Monday. You may have noticed I've changed my shot a little bit so there's less headroom. Not sure I totally like it, but working on it. This is going to be one of these videos that is going to take a while to get to the point. So bear with me here. There's a lot of background to get this to make sense. Uh, I'm going to start with one of the fondest memories I have of my school days. Um... When I was in the sixth grade, our my very, very strict teacher, dude was like ex-military, total hardcore, made you do push-ups if you were bad in class. Like he was kind of a light corporal punishment type of dude. Um, he let us play dice, pen and paper, second edition, advanced Dungeons and Dragons in school for creative writing assignment, me and two other guys. He let us do this. And it was one of the greatest school experiences I have ever had because we wrote like a choose your adventure story based on like our Dungeons and Dragons at like the end of every week. Everybody else handed like their one page of creative writing and we were like, boom, phone book size camp. I don't know if you read it. Like it was so much paper. Um, and at the end of the year, I remember at graduation, he looks at me in a stern. He always looked down his nose just because he, he was like, his posture was such that he wasn't looking down his nose, nose at you. We really weren't sure if he could bend his neck. And he was one of those guys with bifocals. So he'd look that way to see things. Um, but he, I remember going, what do you actually think about this? Dungeons and Dragons. And I I babbled about how great it was. And he kind of like, he nodded as much as his unmoving neck would allow him to, to, to nod. Mr. Bingham probably isn't still alive, but shout out to Mr. Bingham at Dairy Down Public School from back in the day. But like, he clearly wasn't sure I was into it. And that was the moment he became sure I was really into it. I wasn't just going along with two guys. If you like this sort of story, help support this channel, become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K, because that experience cements me about not cutting out um, additional educational materials in public school classrooms. If the restrictions that exist in education, even up here today, existed back then, I'm not sure he would have had the discretion to let us do that. Because I mean, when you think about it, it's like, that's a pretty cool teacher. Everybody was freaking terrified of this guy because he made us run laps and do push-ups if we were bad. But like, and it, it was so meticulous. It had to be a number two pencil and three ring loose leaf paper with a red line on the margin. Or like, dude had OCD. But he did that. And I remember we had these things called SRAs, which are reading things that I just blew through them. It was supposed to be self-guided learning. So he got me the, like the junior high school, like the grade seven, eight, and nine SRAs in the sixth grade. This teacher, as hard ass as he was, really let kids, if kids wanted to do more work, he's like, there you go. Do more work, kid. Right. But Obviously, like this was this was the late 80s, early 90s, right? Like Dungeons and Dragons was not the safe, wholesome thing it's seen as now, right? Like they were linking Dungeons and Dragons to like murders and suicides and all these things. So that was a reach for a teacher to do back then. And, you know, not only did that cement my love of role playing games, but it also made me a huge advocate of gaming in the classroom. That and the way the game Number Munchers um, allowed me to get over the reality of skipping grade two, going into grade three gifted and never learning multiplication or, or division to, to like, I think it was like five or something like that. But yeah, I, I didn't know it and I was expected to know it and they drilled us and it was trauma and horrifying and awful. And if it wasn't for math games, I never would have gotten through it because I, I had like straight up 
panic attacks. I didn't know what they were at the time. But when I think about it now, like those were straight up panic attacks with those math drills because I, I, I didn't know. Like imagine if somebody puts something down and you're being tested and you don't have the first clue what you're doing. It was just, so I am a big proponent of gamified learning. Now, I know the research. I know that uh, gamified learning on its own does not get the results that standard education does. You can't just give somebody a video game and replace a teacher. Of course not. I'm not advocating that. I'm saying for kids who, for whatever reason, traditional educational methods don't work. Video games and and comic books and other things were great supplements. I mean, another amazing memory I have when I was at, at Daystrom in Gifted is I wasn't allowed to read comic books at home because my father thought they were they were they were bad and evil. Uh, <laughs> boy, did that attempt at parenting fail. Um, but I remember that the library that we went to for once a week, every couple weeks, something like that. But we'd go to the library for a set amount of time and we just get to like explore the library, read at the library. And I remember they had these Donald Duck comics and Scrooge McDuck comics. And oh my God, those things were freaking brilliant. And I was all about the Donald Duck and Scrooge McDuck comics. So good. Brilliant. Oh my God. Um, that was around the same time I discovered Metroid, uh, which was awesome too. Um, and the other thing I loved in school was where in the world is Carmen San Diego, the Oregon Trail, and the Apple IIe games. Oh my God. Like, these are some of my best memories of elementary school. Um, so you obviously know how I feel about giving educators the ability to include questionable stuff and using their judgment because again, you know, uh, it was the late 80s and early 90s and D&D &D was considered still by many to be satanic. And like a lot of the things that we were into is, you know, it's like, that's going to make the kids gay. Um, and... I was fortunate enough to be in school at a time where teachers had a lot of discretion to take risks in that regard. So the reason I use that as a preface, we're getting to the porn, I promise, um, is this has me very, very concerned as someone who's a big advocate as for video games as supplemental educational materials about these th this is where language becomes a problem so please don't get hung up on them but the various bills that are basically reactions to critical race theory and critical race theory is not taught k through 12 in the US but for some reason a bunch of states have decided to well Florida and is it Iowa have flat out uh, Idaho? I'm sorry, Idaho have flat out banned. Like they say critical race theory in the bills. Those are the ones that have me the most worried. But Texas and Kentucky and a couple other states have this weird ass wording. So we're dealing with two separate but equal problems in this legislation let's do the one where i think there's gonna be the most agreement on first because this wording i, I think you guys will immediately see uh the problem i have with this um it, it remember these are republicans okay these are republicans bringing this forward and i i really apologize um for the mess of, um, y y you know, the it's, it's italicized because these are the additions. So school council, teacher, or other employee of the school district, uh, public school, you know, basically they don't allow, cannot use, uh, shall not, shall not include. The shall 
is stronger than may not, okay, shall not include in supp- um, supplemental instructional materials that are in- that include or promote any of the following co- co- uh, concepts. And it's number seven down here that I went, this is a Republican? Any individual should feel discomfort, guilt, anguish, or any other form of psychological distress on account of his or her race or sex. Discomfort. Discomfort. Or any other form of psychological distress. This is the, it made me uncomfortable. This is nonverbal cue shit. Okay, Republicans. And this is in Texas. And this is in Kentucky. I'm like, what the shit? They just banned Taming of the Shrew, okay? And Taming of the Shrew was one I did get in high school, so it was still K K through 12. But, okay, this is is a line from uh, uh, Taming of the Shrew, okay? Um, I'll make it brief. Even such a woman oweth to her husband, and when she is froward, peevish, sullen, sullen, sour, and no obedient to his honest will, what is she but a foul contending rebel and graceless traitor to her loving lord? I ashame that women are so simple to offer war where they should kneel for peace or seek for rule, supremacy, and sway when they are bound to serve, love, and obey. Now, reading that in a class would probably make someone feel discomfort on account of their gender. Congratulations, Texas and Kentucky. You just banned Shakespeare. Like, and is this, is this tongue in cheek really friggin' dated? Yeah. But, you know, back in the day when we read stuff like that in school, we'd all friggin' laugh about it. Like, it'd be big jokes. And teachers would go, yeah, yeah, okay, doesn't totally hold up. But aren't Republicans the ones normally going, facts don't care about your feels? This is how knee-jerk these laws are, okay? I suspect they will eventually see the error of their ways and amend these. Um, Because discomfort is not an acceptable standard. Anybody can say something makes them uncomfortable. And based on the way these laws are written, it can't be taught. Fuck us. Um... And, and this, this is all, of course, in response to this whole critical race theory lunacy. Now, Idaho and Florida actually reference critical race theory by name. And this is like, I don't think there's any way this is going to uphold a constitutional challenge in part be, just because of the way it's worded. Like, here's the Florida law. Instruction on the required topics must be factual and objective and may not suppress or distort significant historical events such as the Holocaust, slavery, the Civil War and Reconstruction, the Civil Rights Movement and the contributions of women, African-American, Hispanic people to our country as already provided in section blah, blah. Uh, examples of theories that distort historical events and are inconsistent with state board approved standards include the denial or minimization of the Holocaust and the teaching of critical race theory, meaning the theory that racism is not merely the product of prejudice, but that racism is embedded in American society and its legal systems in order to uphold the white, the supremacy of white persons. Okay, here's the problem with that. Instruction must be factual and objective and may not suppress or distort significant historical events, but they cannot teach that racism is embedded in American society and its legal systems in order to uphold the supremacy of white persons. So how do they teach Jim Crow and redlining? Because those are two instances that the the ramifications continue forward till today Redlining still happens with banks. There, there have been stories where black homeowners have their white friends pose as the homeowner to raise the amount of their home value. Um, how do you teach that without saying that racism is embedded in American society and its legal systems to uphold the supremacy of white persons? It's an inherent contradiction. 
you you just you you cannot both not uh, uphold the may not suppress or distort standard and accurate accurately teach Jim Crow and redlining, which I notice they say the Civil War and Reconstruction. Something came after that. Wow. Um, but it's the specific reference to critical race theory that gets us to porn. What? Hear me out. You guys know I have issues with critical race theory. I don't think Chris, critical race theory is is useful. I think it is the practice of slapping a lot of more sizzly words and phrases onto things, but it's very little new thought. Um, you know, they call uh, post-colonial hegemic social constructs whiteness, for instance, and everybody goes crazy when in, you know, for obvious reasons. Um, you know, instead of it being... Uh, equality it's anti-racism all that stuff but are these new ideas no they're new names for pre-existing ideas for the most part done snazzy and that's where a lot of it gets into trouble is that in order to make it sound cool and exciting and dynamic and get that big applause line they overdo it and end up saying things that it's like wait a minute like everybody is doing the bullshit Everybody is doing like like the the Texas Republicans that suddenly care about discomfort based on gender and race and and you know the people who are all about well discrimination for equity is okay uh, they're all shitting the bed they're all shitting the bed they're putting the short term applause line the short term good feels ahead of something that's actually robust as either law or scholarship and this is where we get to porn. OK, it's impossible to really define what critical race theory is because critical race theory is not one thing. It's actually not systemic racism. That's not th that's a gross oversimplification. Like I said, like there are parts of American history where the legal systems and, and, you know, social stuff was designed to uphold the supremacy of white persons, slavery, Jim Crow, redlining, so on and so forth. Right. Like, like that's there. We, we can't do anything about it. And we can't do anything about the fact that we still have echoes of this today that we have to sort out up in Canada. You may have seen the stories about our, our indigenous residential schools and the horrible shit that went down there. Yeah, we're still dealing with that, too. Right. And these are raw wounds. These are raw nerves. But the problem is that that's just history. That's not a theory. Critical race theory is something more amorphous. And the problem is when you can't define something clearly, when something doesn't have really clear edges, if you can't define what it is, you can't really define what it's not. And you get the Stewart test. And this is where we get to porn. And this is where my red flags, every like uh, 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 artistic expression warning bell went off in my head with this stuff. Because what they've basically written into law is a whole bunch of I know it when I see it standards. They don't have a clear distinction because they mention critical race theory, which is just a collection of authors. And the Florida bill goes on to define meaning the theory that racism is not merely the project of pre pre prejudice, but that racism is embedded in American society and its legal systems in order to vote. And then they, then they flat out banned the 1619 project. Like it actually says instruction may not utilize material from the 1619 project. And may not define American history as something other than the creation of a new nation based largely on universal principles stated in the Declaration of Independence. This is a joke and coming. P.S. Indigenous people, you're getting fucked. OK, like th this is ridiculous. They, they are saying you can't distort history and they're distorting history. 
Apparently, America, the area that is now America, just did not exist before white people showed up. And which white people? The English? The Spanish? The French? The Dutch? Which one? Like, are we supposed to say that, you know, the, the Vikings didn't visit before? Like, fuck this. This is, this is shit. This is a knee-jerk, badly written law that is trying to turn history into mythology. And yet I have people, I had people swearing at me on Twitter, calling me a liar, who are normally the biggest free speech proponents out there defending this shit as necessary. And again, this is where we get to porn. This critical race theory boogeyman thing that we can't really define, it's a it, what it really is, is it's the collected works of a set group of authors that sometimes write about the fact that racism is embedded in American society, and sometimes they don't. And sometimes they, they like, a, a guy like Derek Bell laser focused on the U.S. legal system. Derek Bell's writing is very, very interesting. But then you get fucking White Fragility by Robin DiAngelo, which is a bunch of regurgitated nonsense that is only notable because the author is white. Even in critical theory, they privilege white authors. That's a joke, kind of. Um, but like critical theory, has, uh, White Fragility really has nothing to do with the law. It's, oh, don't be a dick at work. Here's a whole bunch of ways you could be a dick and don't even know it because I was a dick this way. Like, can you tell I'm not a fan of that book? But then you get all these like personal first person postmodern writings that also make up critical theory that really have nothing to do with a hardcore focus on racism being embedded in American society. And, you know, this how to be an anti-racist thing, which is it's a constant, it's a, it's a personal project. So you can't define it. You can't define it. It's a lot of things because all it really is, is it's like, you know, the beat poets from back in the day or the, the rat pack or the brat pack, you know, imagine BTS started doing academic writing and anything that was written by BTS was considered BTS critical theory. It's pretty much what it is. It's, that's really the only way you can define it. But... That's not how they've defined it here. So you have this sort of, I know it when I see it test. And the I know it when I see it test is, is known from uh, Jaco Bellis versus Ohio, which was an obscenity, um, a, an obscenity ruling by the Supreme Court, which basically something was determined to not be hardcore pornography based on this logic. I shall not today attempt further to define the kinds of material I understand to be embraced with that shorthand description of hardcore pornography. And perhaps I could never succeed in intelligibly doing so. But I know it when I see it. And the motion picture involved in this case is not that. I know it when I see it. Now, William, William Goldberg, William T. Goldberg said what was wrong with that. This simple phrase, embedded in a plurality opinion, carries with it many of the conflicts and inconsistencies that continue to plague American obscenity law. In effect, I know it when I see it, can still be paraphrased and unpacked as, I know it when I see it, and someone else will know it when they see it, but what they see and what they know may or may not be what I see and what I know, and that's okay. And this is the thing that fucked video games as protected speech until another Supreme Court ruling. Thank you, Antonin Scalia. Okay, this dogged video games for years. This I know it when I see it stuff. Ah, there's this thing I don't like. Hardcore porn. What is it? I don't know. I'll tell you when I see it. So anything, anything, and we get back to this discomfort thing. How does somebody know it when I see it? Well, does it make them uncomfortable, right? That's it. It's a gut reaction. If you cannot define it, now there actually is an official definition for hardcore pornography, but I'm pretty sure I can't say it because that'll violate YouTube rules. 
Uh, but there actually is a line when softcore, which is sort of simulated sex, it's usually above the waist, goes into full-on penetration. I probably just broke YouTube rules. But um, there's an example of, I do not think that was obscene. YouTube thinks that is obscene. YouTube just gets to make arbitrary rules that it can change whatever they want. That is bullshit. And this is the issue I have with these critical race theory laws. They are saying critical race theory, but also anything that's Jim Crow or redlining because, oh, that's that's acknowledging systemic racism. You can't do that. But also the 1619 Project, which is just a bunch of essays presented as opinion, not fact. That gobbledygook mess with no no clear boundaries is bad law. And if we let bad law stay on the books, if we support bad law, that creates bad precedent. And the next time some political extreme or another comes at video games, because this time they don't have to do it through the courts, they can do it through the school boards, and just make it, okay, you can do whatever you want, but we've determined this harms your child. Hint, hint, parents. And this creates a chilling effect. Like, parents are like, I, I don't, I don't want to do something as bad for my child. So all of a sudden, video games get demonized, and people argue, oh, no, no, we're not, we're not attacking free speech. It's just curriculum. School boards have the right to set curriculum. Well, yeah. School boards can determine whether something's officially taught. But curriculum does not deal with the stuff like an independent reading assignment or a question a student asks in class. These, these bills are far more wide-reaching than simply the setting of curriculum because curriculum is opt-in. Curriculum is deciding what goes on a course. Curriculum is not about banning entire things. And um, the Idaho legislation actually says that they're banning critical race theory because it uh, is contrary to the unity of the nation and the well-being of the state of Idaho and its civilians. So imagine if some Republican politician or Democratic politician down the road decides that video games are bad for unity. People are getting all these ridiculous, unusual, abnormal thoughts. Well, that apparently alone is enough to ban something. Don't believe me? It's right here. Undermine the... Okay. Uh, often found in critical race theory, undermine the objectives outlined in su subsection one of this section and exacerbate and inflame divisions on the basis of sex, race, ethnicity, religion, color, national origin, or other criteria in ways contrary to the unity of the nation and the well-being of the state of Idaho and its citizens. Free thought is not allowed. Isn't this the party that, that supposedly believed in diversity of views? Isn't this the party that attacked trans people saying facts don't care about your feels? It doesn't matter if you're uncomfortable. Oh, well, now it does. This is a mess. This is a mess. And because it's a mess, because now everything is morally, ethically, and structurally adrift, we are in the territory of I know it when I see it. And that is a censorship paradise. It's hell on earth for artistic expression, freedom of thought, and critical thinking. But it, it's nice and homogenous. It's nice and morally, mentally sanitized. But this, this ain't freedom of expression. This is, this and this, okay, this isn't a slippery slope argument, right? This isn't, oh, but it might, but it might, but it might. 
No, we've seen this. We've seen this with the 10 cent plague. We've seen this with other moral panics. We see how people are just crushed under the boot heel of think of the fucking children. Because when we hit think of the children, people just turn off their brains and don't stop and ask, is this really harming children? Like Florida, it all got touched off because some teacher had the temerity to have a Black Lives Matter flag in her classroom. And why that wasn't just a discussion between the teacher and the parents and let's let's everybody get together and talk. No, people keep using the courts. People keep using the system as a first resort instead of a last. And that is not what the court system, that is not what the law was designed to do. We need to protect that cushion of lawful but awful behavior that we deal with on a social level and everybody remains a little bit uncomfortable and uneasy, sometimes a lot uncomfortable and uneasy. Um, because... I'm going to protect the freedoms of people I find disgusting so I can protect my own freedoms. There's a big difference between gross and illegal. There at least should be. Because when those obscenity laws kick in, when that I know it when I see it comes in, um, it's a real problem. I mean, in case anybody's interested, um... They eventually put in something called the Miller test, which is the average person applying local community standards, looking at the work in its entire must find that it appeals to the prurient interest. The work must describe or depict in an obviously offensive way, sexual conduct or excretory functions. I don't know why excretory functions. Um, the work as a whole must lack serious literary, artistic, political or scientific values. Um that's the legal standard now that I'll know it when I see it. I remember that was quoted all over the place when when I was uh, when I was younger as I don't have to explain why I think something is obscene. You need to explain why it's not because I know it when I see it. And again, because this never gets to a court because this never, you know, has to pass legal burden it's done in school boards and at the community level and this think of the children pta mind numbing bubble wrapped horse shit this stuff does suppress stuff we know about the self-censorship that some game developers already engage in right we know what happens when people go, I'm not taking this away from you, but you better not. You're, you know, problematic, pernicious. We know what happens here. We know that people can go, we're not trying to take away your video games and yet you see the change. So why should we be allowing this anywhere? Why are people not recognizing that this is very similar, that greater principles hold bad law, murky law, mushy law, law without clear boundaries is a problem. Because if we stack too many of those laws on top of each other, well, they're really easy for bad actors to manipulate, to label things obscene, because they know it when they see it, right? And it's it was my work in work with adult stars interviewing them being on on adult film sets getting to know them as people seeing what they do how they interact with their fans how the whole industry works it make me it made me realize that just because their work may make some people uncomfortable for various reasons does not mean it should be shut down consenting adults only obviously right these things matter and going to bat to to defend against bans things you don't agree with are extremely important because you can't expect anybody to tolerate the stuff you like and they think is gross 
if if you haven't done it yourself, if you take the cheap knee jerk coward's way out when it's convenient because you don't like the subject matter. I know it when I see it. Right. All right. I may not read comments on this because I know there's going to be screaming because every time stuff like this comes up, people don't deal with the content of what I say. They just rant and rant and rant and rant. This isn't about critical theory. This isn't about critical race theory. This is about bad law. Period. End of story. So save your fucking critical race theory rants because you're allowed to have those opinions. You're allowed to hate it. You're allowed to express that because that's free speech. It's just not on topic and I won't read it. Okay, fair, right. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron, patreon.com slash Leanna K. Thanks for watching.